when I became a travel creator, I searched the depths of the internet for a video like this and I could never find one. So that's why I am making it. So this video is gonna be all about how to manage your finances as a travel creator. This video can really be applied to anyone in the creator industry, but because I'm a travel creator, I'm gonna speak to being a travel influencer. I will be specific about things that are like more travel focused versus other niches. So if you are a creator or you think about being in the travel industry, like these things would apply to you as well. Before we even get into the video, know that this is not financial advice. I'm just talking about the things that I have experienced experience and different elements in my life that I think may or may not be useful for you. So first thing about being a travel creator is taxes. Oh my gosh, nobody talks about taxes. So when I started being a travel creator, I was actually working full time as an engineer. So I was still getting paid through my, what is it, W2, I think it is. I was still getting paid a paycheck in the mail, right? So when you get paid through a job, you were paying taxes every single paycheck, which is why like there's your gross and then there's like, your net pay, you know, on your paycheck. So I was still paying taxes, you know, throughout the year. But as a self-employed individual, as a business owner, you have to pay taxes quarterly. So when I was still employed, those taxes that I was paying were being applied to like my business taxes. At the end of the year, I would owe a few hundred dollars there or whatever, but it wasn't a huge tax bill because I already been paying taxes the entire year. When you are not employed by someone else, so when you become self-employed, which is what happened with me, you are now responsible for paying your taxes quarterly to the IRS. And I have made this mistake in that I did not pay quarterly. I ended up having to pay a fee because I didn't pay quarterly and it was basically like a late fee. So what I do every single time I get paid, whether it be through a brand partnership or through a creator fund or any type of payment that I receive, I will take 30% off the top and save it for taxes. Now I chose 30% because that was kind of the mid range of the tax bracket that made the most sense for me when I started like being a creator. I have heard of other creators that do upwards of 40 or 50%. I think that's kind of overkill because the time you subtract your expenses and you actually are paying taxes on the profit for the year, it's generally not that much. So just to break down profit versus revenue, let's say you make $100,000 as a creator in one year. You have business expenses, which are costs that are associated with you running your business every single month, you know, through the entire year. So as a travel creator, that can be hotel stays, it could be flights, it could be Ubers, it could be airport transportation, it could be airport parking, it could be meals throughout your trips. I've even have expense like my nails getting done. So if I have to shoot a campaign and my nails have to be done, that's an expense. If I have to get my hair done, if I have to get professional makeup done, anything like that is an expense. Let's say you make the $100,000 per year and then you have expenses that are $30,000 out of the entire year. You would then pay taxes on your profit, which would be $70,000. However, if you make $100,000 per year and then your expenses are $80,000 in that year, you would pay taxes on the profit, which would be $20,000. So that's why I always tell people it is super, super important to keep track of your expenses and you can expense so many things. So since I work from home and I'm a creator, part of my rent is expensed. Um, part of my Wi-Fi and uh, cell phone usage is expensed. Anytime I have to buy any equipment, like travel equipment, that's also an expense. Any of my recording equipment is also an expense. Any of my software usage, so I pay for Canva or I'll pay for like different um, YouTube sources, that's an expense as well. In terms of what you can and can't expense, I would definitely speak to your financial advisor or your tax accountant, specifically your tax accountant, about what can be an expense because a lot of people kind of take the expenses in whatever direction they want and that is totally up to you and your business with the IRS. However, I would strongly recommend that you get a tax accountant that is specifically for creators. So I have a tax accountant that's for creators and they know all the ins and outs of what creators can and can't write off. Because I'm a travel creator, I can write off all the things that are related to my travel industry or my travel niche. And then if I were to, let's say, switch into the lifestyle niche, I could then expense things that were associated with my lifestyle niche and any content that I have. Some people re recommend that you keep track of all of the content that you make, including those items. I don't know, let's say you bought a dress and you then did a review on that dress. Um, a lot of people say that you should keep a file of all of the content that you have made using with the items that you have expensed. So if you expense your nails or if you expense your hair, like you need to keep a file on your computer of all of the videos that you have created with those nails or with that hair or with that dress. 
Again, I think that's overkill, but listen to your financial advisor or your tax accountant and follow their guidelines because I listen to whatever my tax accountant tells me and that is what I do. Basically, keeping expenses throughout the year is super, super important. And when I was still a part-time creator, I would just keep it on Excel sheet. So the inner engineer me just loves a spreadsheet. So I would just keep track of it manually and I also didn't have that many expenses. But now that it's my full-time career, I do keep it um, in QuickBooks. So QuickBooks is super easy. You can just connect your bank account or your credit card or whatever card that you use, you can connect it to it and you can automatically, like it'll pop up in your screen and then you can also determine what type of expense it is. So whether it's a travel expense or a general supply expense or a medical expense, I will also expense my health insurance that I have to pay for because now I'm self-employed, I am responsible for my own health insurance. So these are things that you should consider um, if you're going from part-time to full-time content creator. What is an expense? How can I you know, control my expenses? How can I keep track of my expenses? And then also, am I saving money throughout the year for taxes or to pay the quarterly payment for your taxes every single year? So taxes is a big one. You do not, you do not, you do not want a big tax bill at the end of the year because it just puts a hole in the following year and then you kind of have to like build yourself out of this hole and it's just a mess. So don't do that. Always save for your taxes. The other thing that I like to talk to people about is health insurance. Like I said, I had to get my own health insurance because I am now self-employed. And in the United States, health insurance is such a big topic because we don't get free health insurance. When my health insurance ran out from my old job, I ended up getting a health insurance agent and he's licensed in multiple um, cities or in, in multiple states. I don't know how many, but he got me my health insurance. And basically I got a private insurance policy where first of all, I'm very, very healthy. So I don't smoke. I don't drink. I'm not pregnant. I don't have kids. I don't plan on having kids either. I exercise regularly. I don't have any pre-existing conditions. Although my family history has some conditions that I may be susceptible to. I personally do not have anything, but I wanted to get health insurance for that reason. Like just in case something is genetic that I don't know about, right? I could still be covered for any type of insurance or any type of like medical issues that I would have. With my health insurance policy, like I said, I have private health insurance. I pay monthly and it is another expense that I have to pay for. However, um, I do have regular health care plus dental and eye care. Um, it was really important for me to have both of them because I work on the internet. So like, I don't want to have nasty teeth. <laughs> and I want to be able to see because I'm working behind a screen every single day. So again, those are things that I consider. I do know people who don't have health insurance at all. So it really is up to you to decide if you even want to get health insurance. I will put my health insurance agent in the description box um, because like I said, he's license in a bunch of different states so he may be helpful for you i'm not totally sure however the thing about my health insurance is that even with it i still have a more co-pays than i did before and i also have to pay out of the pocket for just about everything which is super annoying even though it's a really great plan for me and it's like the best plan that's really possible for a self-employed person with my age and with my demographics it still isn't great so i ended up going to america's best which is where i get my eye care and i purchased their i think it's like their annual like eye checkup eye exam checkup or something so i have three years of that for a hundred dollars and then also do dental care at a dental office but they offer really reasonably priced cleanings for people who don't have health insurance so even though i do have health insurance my health insurance is out of network for just about every place in california so it doesn't make any freaking sense but being out of network is significantly more costly than being in network so instead i just go to this like i guess like a third party dental office it's a real dental office they are real dentists but um they can offer me a rate for my exams for my um x-rays and for like patient care and also for cleanings and it's not a thousand dollars or something crazy for me to do so if that's something you're considering there are alternatives for you to still get health care even if you don't buy health care every single month other thing for my eye care i do get contacts and i get them from costco which is super cheap which people like normally don't think of costco as a place to buy contacts but like that's where i get my contacts so that's what i do medical insurance is a big thing as someone who was the first like self-employed person with medical insurance like in my family it was something i had to figure out on my own and it was just like so overwhelming but once you get a health insurance agent 
they honestly do all the work for you and then they can tell you like what you can and can't use and like what you know it, are your co-pays and then like what's included and what's not included and all those things so next and i honestly probably should start the video with this is your emergency fund so with transitioning from being you know a full-time employee versus being self-employed um there are a lot of expenses that started especially startup costs that you just don't consider but what was really important for me was having an emergency fund to be able to cover anything that i would have to pay for so when i transitioned i had an emergency fund that was four months of living expenses and i honestly think that was too little because of how the travel cycle or like the travel influencer cycle of like brand deals and stuff goes i thought that was way too small so i personally recommend that you have six months at least of your a monthly expenses in an emergency fund and that way you can always access it the reason why i say it was too small is because i ended up having a visit to the hospital and because of my private insurance didn't cover much of anything i ended up paying out of pocket for it and then i had like car expenses that came up and then i had dental insurance that came, like it was just like so many things all at one time that i was like ah my emergency fund but like the purpose of an emergency fund is for emergencies so it did its job but i would have felt more comfortable if i had had six months of living expenses in my savings account versus is the four months that I had. Now that I am, I guess, a year and a half into being a full-time influencer, I like to have six months in my emergency fund. And then I also will have like three months of business expenses in my business savings account. So every single month, you know like what your expenses are. They generally remain the same in terms of like any softwares that you're paying for, um, you know, your actual rent, your utilities, like anything like that. But in general, the influencing industry is a really small expenses where like if you're living within your means, you should not have that many expenses. I think every single month I will pay for mm, like Canva. Um, I pay for QuickBooks. I pay for mostly softwares are my residual expenses. Anything beyond that is kind of like I pay for every three months or every two months. So if I have a trip that I really want to go on and let's say part of the trip is sponsored, but the other part isn't, that means I'll have to send my own money for it. So if it happens every three months, I'll take that three month value and just divide it by three three so that I know what my business expenses are every single month. Hopefully that makes sense. You need to have money for your business expenses in case there isn't any money coming in because what happens in specifically in influencing is that there are waves of periods where there are so many campaigns and there are waves where there are like no campaigns and most influencers will make their money based on brand partnerships. So if you are a travel influencer, most of the travel campaigns are launching in April and May and then you get paid either net 30 next 60 or net 90 although I would not recommend anything above net 30 so you may do a partnership in April but then you don't get paid till May or you may do a partnership in May but then you don't get paid till June and even though it's a large sum of money you may not see another campaign until September and then if you're not a winter travel influencer right so if you don't do any type of like winter specific content within your travel content you may not see any campaigns for any of the winter campaigns right so let's say like you do a holiday campaign so you may start the holiday campaign in October and then you get paid let's say early December or late December, right? But then there aren't any new campaigns in Q1. So you have to go January, February, March without any new money coming in. So you have to know how to be able to manage your money throughout the entire year, knowing that you're going to get big payments in June and December. So that's another thing that people don't really talk about. So what I always tell people is that you need to have money in the bank to save you for at least three months. It feels really great when you get those big payments and those big checks, but you have to be able to manage your own finance so that like, I can't spend all this money this month because I need to be able to live and pay rent for the next two months. The campaigns typically don't happen as quickly as you may see them um, online. So even though you may see me in a commercial or see me in a sponsored ad, now, which is September, I actually shot that back in June and I got paid for it in July. And even though it's active in September, you know, I won't be working on the next campaign until the end of September, which I'll get paid for in October. But then you guys won't actually see until December. And then like, there's like a cycle. So everything is kind of delayed where like, you just have to be able to pay your bills every month. That's what it is. At the end of the day, you got to pay them bills. Okay. So one thing before you quit, I would plan how you can 
incorporate seasonal content within your original content. So like I said, if you are a travel creator, you're most likely going to get campaigns during the summer. That's when everyone travels. However, if you don't do any winter travel content, you're really relying on all those summer campaigns to pay your bills throughout the entire year. And um, this is also another reason why a lot of creators will have multiple streams of income, which I also highly, highly, highly recommend. The creators will have affiliate links. Um, they'll have different digital products. They may have courses. They may have memberships. They may have other ways for them to make money. And even though brand partnerships are the biggest way for you to earn income, creators do rely on other things as well to like pay their bills throughout the year where, you know, they may not have a lot of brand partnership money coming in. The other major, major thing that I would recommend, and this is the last one, but it is really having a lawyer on retainer. I know that sounds absolutely bonkers because like how many people actually have a lawyer waiting for their call but it is so necessary and it is one of those things that you do to save you money in the long run because a lot of times people will try to take advantage of creators and their influence and you know their platforms and things like that so if you have a lawyer or retainer specifically either an entertainment lawyer or a content creator lawyer then they will really be able to help you with your contracts and make sure you are being paid your worth hopefully even more but make sure you're being paid appropriately and also that the other part party is abiding by the guidelines and abiding by the contract. There have been plenty of times where I've seen creators that they sign a contract with a brand and then that brand takes their content and posts it places that they didn't contractually agree to. And then that brand ends up owing the creators tons of money because that creator had a lawyer that reviewed the contract and be like, oh, actually girl, you wasn't supposed to post this here. You wasn't supposed to use this here. You didn't pay for this, yada, yada. So it really helps to have a lawyer because you can either have them review your contracts, you can have them draft new contracts, and you can have them actually enforce the contract after you have that brand deal to make sure that everything's going smoothly. So that is my literally my number one biggest hack is to always have a lawyer creator. Um, specifically in my experience, I've had brands that will take my content and use it without my permission and because I have a lawyer that's ready to <laughs> answer my call when I need they will go after that person and be like um no you need to pay for this and if not you know then they take it down or whatever so it is just so important that you have that in place and that you are covering yourself and protecting yourself but also protecting like your own IP and being paid what you should be paid because again people will try to take advantage of you in this industry those are my tips for managing your finances as a creator hopefully this is helpful if you have any more questions let me know in the comments and i will try to get to it and if not i will make a whole nother video to answer your question because a lot of these topics are very important yet very few people actually talk about it so let me know if you have any questions and i will see you guys in the next video bye